Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Now in this one, we're gonna look at the psychology and the mental approach to playing good snooker. Now as a player, there's gonna be lots of times when you're under pressure and you get nervous and you feel that pressure. That could be if you're trying to beat your highest break, we all get a little bit nervous and tense as the numbers get higher. If you're somebody that plays in matches, that can be when you've got a complete a good clearance and that means that you will win the frame or it could be that someone's left you a really good chance in the balls and you've got to try and hold yourself together so that you can score a few points. So in this video, we're gonna look at two methods. One is having a plan. Now that's not the same as the pre-shot routine and I'm gonna explain in detail exactly how that works in this video. And the second one is breaking things down into bite-sized pieces. And again, I'm gonna explain exactly how that can help you as a player. Now the first thing I wanna do here is bust a bit of a myth. And I hear this all the time from players that they say to me, if I could just stop feeling nervous, then I would play much better in my matches and I would manage to beat my highest break. But you will not stop feeling nervous, so you won't manage to stop those nerves. Even though we're playing a game here, you're trying to do really well when you're playing a match, so you really want to beat your opponent, they want to beat you. And at certain times, your brain and your body is going to interpret the, the pressure situation of playing snooker competitively as a threat or a danger and that's why you produce that adrenaline and we get nervous. The same happens when you're trying to beat your highest break. As those numbers go higher, we perceive that as a threat and a danger, and that's why we get nervous. So you have to accept that you're human, you're going to feel nervous at certain times, and it's how we deal with it that separates you as a player. So I'm going to explain now all about making a plan and how that really helps you to combat nerves. Right, so what's this plan that we're gonna form? Now, I always describe this to players as knowing exactly how you're going to behave in a situation before it actually presents itself. So an example I always give of this is when people get road rage. So you're driving along the road, somebody cuts you up, maybe they beep you because they think you've done something wrong, and you just react automatically and you end up beeping back or losing your temper. Now, I decided years ago that it was a complete waste of time to ever lose my temper on the road. So. I'm just as likely to make a mistake on the road as anybody else. We all make odd mistakes, so you might accidentally pull out. So if someone does it to me, I will just completely ignore it. I won't beep. I already know exactly how I'm gonna behave in that situation. If someone gets angry at me, I also know I'll just completely ignore it and not react. So I already decided up front, I know how I'm going to behave in that situation. So when that situation presents itself, so in that road rage scenario there, I already know exactly how I'm going to behave. So I've already preempted and I've already accepted up front how I'll behave. Now, that is the same when we're playing snooker here. We can be playing a match, your opponent can get a really big fluke and you can immediately react to you're disappointed because they've fluked that ball and they've landed perfectly on the next one. Again, you could already decide exactly how you're going to react in that situation and you can decide that you'll show no emotion, you won't react to it. Then your opponent has got no feedback of you getting frustrated and you also have managed to stay calm because you already accepted before you went to the match, if any of that happens, you're going to stay nice and calm and that's how you're going to behave. One more example there, that could be if you go into the pack, maybe I'm on the black and I go into the pack of reds, I split the balls and one goes into the middle pocket, that's a foul and now my opponent is at the table with the perfect split. If I've already decided that I'm not going to react in that situation, it helps me to stay calm. I don't want to be reacting automatically. So when I go to matches, I've got these things in my mind before I go there that I'm not gonna lose my temper. I don't wanna show my opponent that I'm getting frustrated. I'm not gonna to react to any flukes. I'm not gonna react if I get any bad luck. And that really helps you by having that plan up front to deal with those situations better. So now we're getting on to the breaking things down into bite-sized pieces. And I'm going to explain how that helps massively in matches to deal with those pressure clearances and also when you get that pressure trying to beat your highest break. So now you might find yourself with this scenario. So I'm in a match here, my opponent has just missed. They've left the red right over the corner pocket. The white is up here, I've got the blue over the middle and the pink is very close to the corner. So this is when you're definitely gonna to start to feel that pressure. You might get a bit of a hit of adrenaline here because you've got an excellent chance to win the frame. Now this is where my plan here, so when I'm faced with these situations where I've got a chance to win, my plan is to break this down into bite-sized pieces. So instead of looking at the table now and thinking, right, I should clear from here, you're an idiot if you don't clear the table, I can't be thinking like that, I have to break it down into manageable little chunks. So I just think, right, my first objective, can I pop this red and leave myself a shot on the blue to get to the yellow? And I'm thinking, yeah, the red is right over the corner pocket, 
If I don't heat it too hard, I'll have a nice angle from the blue to get to the yellow. So my answer to that is yes, I can complete that objective. If I don't quite get the white where I want to, I can change my plan. But here, I'm just thinking small goal, pop this red, leave a shot on that blue. So I'm just trying to float the red in, not too hard. And then the blue is waiting over that corner pocket. So I'm also on the pink. But here, what I'd be thinking is, right, I want to pop this blue now and then leave a shot on the yellow. So my bite size thinking again, so breaking it into small sections is, can I pop the blue and then leave a shot on the yellow? And I think I definitely can here. So let's pop this again, a little bit of screw back to hold the white. And then I've left a shot on the yellow. Now I'm actually here, I'm a bit further away from the yellow than I would have liked. So this is where, again, you have to stay in the moment and just ask yourself small little questions. So I'm thinking, can I pop this yellow and screw back for the green? Now, I would prefer to be much closer to the yellow, that would make the shot a lot easier. But I know I've potted plenty of these yellows in the past, so I know I can complete that objective. So I'm just going to do everything right to pop this yellow and then leave a shot on the green. As long as I do everything right, I'm then happy that I didn't panic, I tried to keep still, I delivered my cue normally, I did everything right on the shot, and if I miss the yellow, well, I'm human, but I didn't miss because I panicked and I rushed the shot because I didn't like it. So this shot here, as I say, I'd prefer to be closer, but can I get a screw back and get on the green? So, as I say, little bite-sized sections, and I've completed that task again. So now I'm doing the same. Can I pop this green, little screw back, leave a little angle on the brown to get to the blue. In answer to that question, I'm thinking, yes, I've done this plenty of times before. So let's go into this shot and try and get the white to just go back a fraction. So I've got that little angle. Again, not thinking about the clearance here, just little sections at a time. And you can see as I'm doing these sections, I'm getting closer. So can I get the white off the cushion and just leave a shot on the blue and the pink's waiting over the corner? Yes, I think I can do that. So as I say, even if you are nervous and you think you could miss, you have to just carry on doing the right things. I don't want to miss this shot for reasons that I panicked and I just hurried up. I've already got my plan that I know I split it down into these sections and keep just one shot at a time. And by having that plan, it helps me to not panic when I get these situations. So little stun over. Off the cushion, that's the common shot. And now I've left, yep, yeah, nice shot on the blue here, so I can just roll towards this cushion, leave myself anywhere on, on the pink. So on and off the cushion. And being a right-hander, I thought I'd be able to reach, but I've slightly overhit that there. But I'm still okay, just about all right to reach and, and get that shot. So. All I've got to do now, pop the pink, roll off the cushion and out for the black. So I can just about reach here. So again, don't panic here. Just think one shot at a time. Can I pop this, roll on and off the cushion and leave a shot on the black? So, yeah, managed to do that nicely. And now again, just go through your pre-shot routine. Do everything right. Don't miss this shot because you panicked. So do everything right. Keep nice and still and just roll the black in. And that'll be the clearance completed. So, as I say, my plan when I get those clearance situations where you're going to feel that pressure, we all want to win, we all want to do well, but my plan is to break it down into those small sections. So, I just don't look at it as a whole, break it down into bite-sized pieces. I'm still doing my thinking three shots ahead and having a bit of a plan, but I don't think about the entire clearance. I ask myself simple little questions. Can I achieve this goal? Yes, I can. I know I've done it loads of times before. If I miss because I'm human and I miss, that's fine. But I don't want to miss because I didn't have that plan. I didn't break it down into bite-sized pieces and I panicked. So as always, everyone, I really hope this video was useful. If it was, let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to hear if you think that this video is going to give you a different outlook on approaching those pressure situations in a match. As always, if you did enjoy it, remember to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new. That really helps me to keep all these videos coming regularly. If anyone's interested in any one-to-one -one coaching sessions, I'm working on this very table, helping players to improve their game all the time. So have a look in the description box below. You'll see all my details there. Send me an email, send me a WhatsApp message, and I'd love to help you with your game. And as always, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.